Hello, sunshine. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10, where I tell you the what, letting you decide what to think. Let's smell those flowers and cool the soup. It is Friday Eve, and we've got a jam-packed show full of knowledge and information for you. Your 10 minutes of news for this Thursday, May 8th starts now. We begin today with a developing conflict that could be edging India and Pakistan close to the brink of an all-out war. Early Wednesday morning, the two nations traded fire. India, the most populous nation in the world, launched military strikes on the neighboring nation of Pakistan's Punjab province and Pakistan-administered Kashmir. India says they were targeting a terrorist infrastructure in response to an April terrorist attack on a group of mostly Indian tourists, killing 26 civilians. Officials in India have long accused Pakistan of backing armed groups and separatist forces inside the Indian-administered portion of Kashmir. Pakistan says that was true in the past, not now. The latest attack occurred in the disputed region of Kashmir, located in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent bordering Pakistan. The conflict over Kashmir goes back decades to the time both countries gained independence from Britain in 1947. After fighting three wars over the territory, a ceasefire line known as the Line of Control was established to divide the region, with India and Pakistan controlling separate sides. With this decades-long conflict showing no signs of resolution, there's no shortage of grievances and accusations being levied on both sides of the border. Our Nick Robertson shows us a bit more about why this disputed territory has been a flashpoint in India-Pakistan relations for so long. High in the Himalayas, Pakistan's army is taking us deep into disputed Kashmir toward the line of control, the de facto border with India and one of the most militarized conflicts in the world. Tensions between the two nuclear-armed neighbors rising since a terror attack killed 26 civilians, mostly Indian, almost two weeks ago. Militaries on both sides readying for possible escalation as India blamed Pakistan and Pakistan denied responsibility. It's a war of words. Civilians on both sides of these rugged mountains fear, not for the first time, will be victims of events way beyond their sway. Control of the towering peaks unresolved for 75 years. Just driving through the mountains here, it's easy to understand why Kashmir is still a disputed area. It's so hard to fight a decisive war in this rugged terrain. The other thing you see here is poverty, meagre villages clinging to the hillside. People here say the spiking tensions making it harder to eke a living, as we're about to find out. On foot now, the village we're heading to, a few hundred feet from the line of control. And just look over there, you can see how close the front lines are. That's the last Pakistani position there, the Indian Army position a few hundred meters away. And those trees, that's the line of control. When we arrive, most villagers clustered around one house, some hiding in the dark inside. Children peeking from unglazed windows. This villager telling us they live in fear now. Elderly children and women are incredibly scared, he says. We want to take our livestock out to pasture, but the Indians are right there in front of us, and we're very concerned. With no end in sight on both sides of the border, civilians as ever the losers in this decades-old conflict. 10 second trivia. Paleontologists have found the most dinosaur fossils in which continent? Antarctica, North America, Africa, or Asia? If you said North America, you are correct. While dinosaur fossils have been found on every continent, including Antarctica, most dinosaur fossils have been found in deserts and the dry, rugged terrain of the Badlands in North America. Now to a new study aiming to unravel the mystery of how the Tyrannosaurus rex came to dominate North America. Researchers at University College London say the direct ancestor of Tyrannosaurus rex, the Tyrannosaurids, came to North America by crossing a land bridge that connected it with Asia 70 million years ago. They used mathematical models that relied on data from fossil records, the T-Rex family tree, and climate conditions to track its evolution over time. They found that the king of dinosaurs 
had closer family ties to the large carnivore Tarbosaurus in Asia than to top predators in North America, and that the T. rex was able to evolve to massive sizes during a period of time where global temperatures fell up to nine tons, which is about as heavy as an African elephant. Now to some news sure to excite Disney fans around the world. The company announced its newest park. This one is set to open in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. It'll be the first Disney park and resort in the Middle East, and it promises a technologically advanced and future-oriented experience. Our Natasha Chen has more on what Disney is planning for its now seventh park location. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Koi. Well, Disney has announced that their seventh global theme park destination is going to be in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. This is a big deal because Disney has not announced a new theme park in 15 years. The last time they told us they were building a new theme park was for Shanghai Disneyland. So this is the first in a generation. And what they plan to do is make this the most technologically advanced park they've ever built. That means it's going to look a little bit different. The artist rendering that they've showed us so far shows a castle in the middle of the park like they have in all their other parks. But this castle looks a little different. It's got this crystal spiral structure going on. And they're saying that this is the first theme park they have that will actually have an accessible waterfront that they'll let guests access. And they're also going to play with some immersive gaming. They say that, for example, what you might see on Fortnite and experience there could translate into what you might do in this park and vice versa. So there's a lot of technological challenge here, as well as some challenge with how they're going to build a park with all these rides and attractions in a sort of desert area where there could be really extreme temperatures in the summer. There are some other theme parks and water parks there already, some of which are really largely indoors, fully air conditioned so people can enjoy themselves. Now, why did Disney choose Abu Dhabi? They already have theme parks in the United States, in California and Florida, in Paris, in Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Tokyo. Uh, and now they are talking about the Middle East because they really want to get at an audience in India, a lot of people in India who could take a shorter flight to Abu Dhabi than they could to, for example, the Shanghai or Hong Kong Disney parks. So there's a lot to look forward to here, but you know, it takes a long time to build a theme park, five to 10 years in fact. So this may not open until the early 2030s, Koi. Now to a major cultural event in Hong Kong where tens of thousands of people are turning out to test some taste bud tantalizing treats at the annual Bun Festival. The Chung Chow Island in Hong Kong, it's a party and dim sum. They've been celebrating this classic Asian snack for hundreds of years with folks flocking to the festival's parade, indulging in the steamy pillowy pastries and watching climbers compete in a gravity defying bun scrambling competition. Gotta loaf it. At the stroke of midnight, climbers race to the top of a tower covered in plastic buns. The most high valued buns are all the way at the top Whoever collects the most points in three minutes time is crown champion. How do you think you would do? This historic festival dates all the way back to at least the 18th century when residents of the island believed offering buns to spiritual deities would end the outbreak of a plague and ward off evil spirits. The more you know. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, a mom and her daughters making graduation a family affair. Four women from the Lee family are proving education is better when you do it together. They'll all be walking the graduation stage on the same day this week at the same school, Georgia State University. Twin daughters, Kamaya and Kalea, are getting their bachelor's degrees in biology. Older sister, Rakaya, graduates with her master's in public administration, while their inspiration, their mom, Keela, is getting her second master's degree. I remember the day that they were born and I remember them being a part of my graduation and now I get to be a part of theirs. I think my mom is the best. I think she's a great role model. Um, she's... I love my mom dearly. I thank God that God, he gave me my mom. Allow me to have somebody like her to look up to <laughs> and to aspire to be like Congratulations to the Lee family, inspiring examples of the value of education at any age. All right, as you can tell, we have a shout out today going to Plaza, North Dakota. Shout out to all our Wildcats at North Shore Plaza High School. Rise up. 
Thank you for the swag. Make the most out of this Friday Eve. Go make someone smile today. Smiles are contagious, you know. I see you right back here tomorrow on the best day of the week, Friday. I'm Koi Wire, and we are CNN 10. <laughs>